Hi everybody, it is Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. Give you a little victory garden update here. Um, everything is doing really well, so uh, we've got ooh, jalapeno peppers in a pot here, and it's like loaded with peppers and blossoms. Um, carrots in a big uh, kind of boxy container like apple crates for them together um, and I've got like the screening on here to uh, prevent the squirrels from getting in there and digging stuff up and the tops just grow right up through there with no problem so I uh, should have a pretty good uh, carrot harvest and these are a miniature um, or a short variety of carrot so um, there's plenty of depth there for them to produce. Back here we've got the cotton plant which is getting ready to produce its first blossoms which will turn into bowls which will be able to harvest cotton balls from that. Um, dill in a pot um, loaded with flower heads. Um, a lot of people just harvest the the leaves um, from the dill to use for pickles and things but there's some great recipes using the heads of the dills to make pickles with and also um, they're gonna produce a lot of seeds so we can harvest dill seed from those lettuce is kind of bolted and gone by uh, more dill and we've got some green beans in window boxes here which are just starting to produce the first beans which is nice uh, we've got sweet potatoes the variety is Beauregard and we've got them growing in pots and they're really starting to take off sweet potatoes grow down regular potatoes grow horizontally so um, they're pretty much maintenance free and you can also eat the leaves on sweet potatoes but you cannot eat the leaves on regular potatoes because they're from the nightshade family and would be poisonous. Um, here we have sriracha peppers loaded. I'm gonna have to start harvesting these. This is a pumpkin kind of volunteer that um, I harvested from where I work. I'd thrown like a pumpkin in a um, kind of uh, planter box uh, last Halloween a couple of years ago and the thing rotted and just you know went to seed and every year like pumpkins emerge from that container so I transplanted one and brought it home we've got um, bloody butcher corn here and it's not a lot but it's just I wanted to plant them to kind of do some seed preservation of this heirloom variety of seed. Uh, here we have some pole beans and structure I created from those out of PVC piping. Those are starting to take off. Here we have more sweet potatoes and they're growing in a cardboard box and I've got the box kind of strapped up uh, just to keep it from falling apart. But it'll be really easy to harvest those. We've got some radishes over here, which are about ready to harvest. Lots of green beans, and fortunately this year I've been able to deter the bunnies. Um, haven't had a problem, unlike the past couple of years. So those will be producing real soon. Uh, we've got our little herb section over here with oregano, a couple of varieties of basil, uh, spearmint, rosemary, uh, parsley, thyme, the cilantro. Just seems to die off real fast so when I'm ready to make salsa I'll just have to buy some from a farmers market. Uh, zinnias in here to attract pollinators, pickling cucumbers galore and they're loaded with blossoms. Um, they'll just trail up this cattle fence here and uh, go to town. Um, Pickles are something that I never seem to make enough of. Um, so this year, 
I've got like three or four different varieties of pickling cucumbers so they should do really well since they're loaded with blossoms. Uh, onions in here and I've trimmed the top off this row just to encourage more leaf growth. Um, if you don't know for each leaf on an onion so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this particular one. That will correspond to one ring of onion. So the more leaves you have, the bigger your onion will be. Um, a lot of people think of onions as a root crop, which it kind of is. Um, it, the onion itself grows underground, but you've really got to cultivate the leaves to get a good crop and keep it well well weeded and the soil has to be really loose and uh, to get a good crop. And we've got some bees buzzing around here pollinating the uh, cucumbers. Some sunflowers growing in here and I've got them I had to put solo cups around them because the squirrels kept digging them up so this prevented that problem from continuing. Um, just cut the bottom out of a solo cup and slipped it over the plant and uh, I've also got them tied up so that if we get a strong storm coming through they won't snap and fall over. Uh, we've got a cherry tomato here which is oh almost as tall as I am and then we've got some indeterminate varieties of tomatoes. The determinate ones are in a cage um, lots of green tomatoes, um, can't wait for them to start ripening. All the plants are loaded with blossoms and uh, one way to ensure that your tomatoes get pollinated or your blossoms form fruit if you don't have enough pollinators is every day or so just kind of come out and kind of gently or somewhat vigorously um, tickle the uh, uh, blossoms and that will drop the pollen down to the from the pistil to the stamen I think and uh, uh, anyway we'll get pollination they'll pollinate that way so just come out and kind of flick them and each one of these will be more likely to form a tomato and not just dry up and fall off more onions all around wherever there's a space um, got some rhubarb over here and uh, that's it for today folks uh, post some comments let me know how your gardens are doing post some pictures and uh, this is Luke from the urban farmer wishing you all a happy 4th of July and brightest blessings peace to you all bye